Hi, welcome to the CSC 351, which is Introduction to Data Science. This is summer of 2020, and I'm Praveen, your instructor. Now, my lecture contents and slides would be um, based on the lecture slides by Professor Skeena and Professor Radfer. All right, so let's start uh, the discussion with the course information. So here let's discuss how I'll be running this course. This is an online version of uh, the Introduction to Data Science, which uh, will be delivered in asynchronous mode. So asynchronous mode means that uh, we won't have to be online at the same time. So we don't have any fixed time like you know, at 11 a.m. EST, I will be holding the lecture and all the students, they want, they should be online to listen to my lecture. You know, this is asynchronous, which means that I will pre-record my lecture videos as I am doing right now. And I will upload that on YouTube and I'll share the link with you. And now it is up to you. It is in, um, it depends on your convenience. Whenever you find the time, you are supposed to cover the lecture material. That means you should watch my video lectures. You should uh, go over uh, the lecture slides and there will be a deadline. Probably there'll be some quiz based on what I taught maybe a week before. So I'll make those announcements later, uh, but it is important to understand how this lecture, uh, this course would be run. Okay, so um, I will be sharing uh, the course information using Blackboard. Uh, so you'll get all the material required like lecture slides, uh, link to the video lectures, the homework, assignments, the project information, everything would be posted on Blackboard. And as I said, I will be uploading the uh, video lectures on YouTube and I'll share the link with you. Okay, so if you want to know about me, then I'm Praveen. Uh, I'm a faculty in computer science department. I'm working as research assistant professor and I joined uh, the university uh, in fall of 2017. I will be holding my office hours and office hour will not be asynchronous. It will be synchronous. That means uh, you can join me on Zoom and the time that I have set up for my office hours is on Monday and Wednesday from 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. So if you are available around that time and if you have any question, then please uh, join me in my Zoom session and I'll be very happy to help you out with any question or any suggestion if you have. Otherwise, if this time is not matching your schedule, then you can request uh, for an appointment. I'll try my best to come up with a schedule which will work for us. And uh, my email uh, is praveen at cs.stonybrook.edu. So if you want to reach out to me, then I prefer this email. Okay, so now you might be wondering like what is this CSC 351 about? Uh, what is it that we are supposed to uh, learn uh, in this introduction to data science course? So um, interestingly, the data science subject that we have is multidisciplinary. Uh, so here uh, we will have to learn about different skills from different domain. So uh, we will learn about statistics a little bit. We will learn about uh, linear algebra. We will learn about machine learning, a little bit of visualization. Uh, maybe if time permits, we will uh, look at uh, uh, high performance computing, which means uh, the big data uh, concepts. So this is an interdisciplinary or you can say multidisciplinary uh, course where we will look at different uh, domains and while we are looking at these concepts from different uh, domains we will uh, look at the theory as well as the practical aspect uh, of the techniques like I mentioned machine learning 
machine learning is a very important component of data science that's how I will put it so if you have some data and you want to you know, come up with some predictive model then probably we will use some machine learning algorithm now these machine learning algorithms are often very complicated so we will try our best to understand these machine learning algorithms to the best we can with whatever background we have and we will also learn the techniques of how to use that efficiently so well to use those efficiently and in a short time I will say that we should use some libraries which are already uh, available to us and fortunately that is the case uh, most of the famous or very popular and important uh, algorithms uh, in machine learning are already implemented in Python so that's a good news so in this data science course we will learn about the theory behind most of the important machine learning algorithms and we will also learn about the libraries in which we have all these things implemented so the result would be that we will um, get to know about some libraries which are very handy but at the same time we won't be using those libraries as, as a black box because we will know what is there behind the scene we will know what is being implemented in that uh, you know library okay so that's the goal now what are the prerequisites yes we do have some prerequisites for this course that is either CSC 214 or CSC 260 or AMS 310 and CSC major so probably you know these things because you were successful in registering now for this course so I believe that you satisfy these prerequisites okay so now more uh, you know I did mention some topics in the previous slide but um, if you really want to know what are these important uh, topics which we will be discussing or learning about in this course introduction to data science then here you go the topics will include linear algebra uh, probability and statistics machine learning uh, and yes we should have a decent programming um, background so we will also look at programming and here um, in this course we will use Python as the programming language uh, so these are few things that we will look into and then for the practice see uh, well, we will have to apply these techniques that we are learning to some data set so that's the way we will learn data science it, it's, it's not you know 100% theory where you won't do any, any uh, implementation we will have to do implementation we will have to uh, practice these techniques which I'll be teaching to you in my lectures so what we will be doing we will be applying these techniques to different data sets and these data sets can come from different domains okay so you might be uh, applying um, the data science techniques or which could be a machine learning algorithm or a data set which you are getting from you know science technology from medicine it could be a sports data so but there, there are a lot of possibilities so this course will involve applying um, these algorithms to different data sets which could be challenging they have to be a bigger data set and in this process when we are uh, uh, applying the techniques on these data sets we will end up doing following things these are EDA which is the first step in data science and this EDA stands for exploratory data analysis this is the very uh, important step uh, in data science and what we do here is that when we are given the data then the raw data usually has uh, a lot of um, problems in it the uh, raw data which is given to us 
might have noise or might have missing data so the first thing that we do is we clean the data okay we pre-process the data we remove outliers we remove noise from the data because uh, in in uh, uh, data mining and data science too we have this notion which says that garbage in garbage out which means that if your data is not clean then whatever predictions you are making whatever modeling you are doing on your data would be not trustworthy so in order to make a good model which will give us uh, a good result we should make sure that the data that we are feeding in is a good data so the EDA involves this task which is pre-processing data cleaning feature engineering visualization so don't worry about all these things I'm mentioning these things to you because today uh, I'm giving you the introduction lecture which is the first lecture where we should uh, uh, understand like what to expect in this course what is it that we are going to study all right so once you have done the EDA uh, you have cleaned the data set you understand different features in the data set features means different properties you identify like you know these are the features that I should have in my model then the next stage would be uh, identifying an algorithm okay so often we'll have uh, a number of um, options available so we need to pick one option uh, of the model which will work the best for our data set okay so we need to identify the best model and once you model means an algorithm so uh, don't worry if you have difficulty understanding these terms right now uh, because you know we will be going uh, slowly and slowly uh, in, in the first few lectures I'll make sure that these terms are making sense to you anyway don't hesitate please ask me questions if you have difficulty understanding these terms all right so once you had the data you cleaned the data you visualized and you got a good understanding of the data and then you applied some machine learning algorithm you developed your model then the next stage would be to use that model for prediction all right so these are some stages which are involved in the process of uh, uh, the data science right so these are some um, important steps which are involved in data science process okay so now right here we have uh, some idea about uh, what we would be learning in, in this course which is introduction to data science so this is in fact the part of your course description so I split the course description into two part the first part is right here which kind of gives you an idea about what this course is all about and what we will learn and here you have more you know details about the different topics which we will be uh, learning all right so now these are some um, uh, you know instructions for you uh, which will help us in our communication so uh, I'm expecting that you people would reach out to me uh, through your email so when you're writing me an email then these are some basic uh, uh, information that I would like to pass on to you uh, please mention in your subject of the email that you your email is about CSE 351 because you know I'll be teaching other courses as well in this uh, semester so it will help if you mention your uh, course number then uh, try your best to explain to me the problem uh, the best you can so try to uh, explain all the, the describe your problem the problem that you're facing okay and uh, please look at the uh, blackboard I will be um, making a lot of announcements uh, so make sure that you are reading every announcement that I'm sending through blackboard which I believe would 
you would receive an email as well for that announcement and um, I will also use Piazza uh, so that is something I have to do and probably in a day or so you should get an email uh, which will give you the instruction about how to register for Piazza so please register and ask your questions over there and probably your friends will uh, um, either answer or I will answer or the TAs will answer anyway we will use Piazza as a uh, forum discussion forum uh, you know to help each other out okay so that was about uh, your student forum using Piazza now upon my office hours as I have mentioned in the initial few slides I will be holding my office hours on zoom so please um, join me in my office hours and if for any reason you can't make it in my office hours you can always ask me for an alternate time uh, for an appointment all right so uh, you might be uh, thinking about the textbook so as I mentioned that it is interdisciplinary course uh, we, we may not have just one ideal textbook uh, which will have everything for this course but luckily I found a textbook which I believe is sufficient for this course and that book is right here the data science uh, design manual it's a very nicely written book I love this book another interesting thing uh, um, about this book is that it's written by one of our own professor who is uh, uh, who is very well known in the domain of data science so if you want probably you can uh, get a copy of this book and you can read that there are other standard books as well which you can use as reference like the elements of statistical learning is a very standard book uh, well it might be a little intense because I think it's uh, about machine learning uh, that to statistical machine learning but I will encourage you people to have a look at it and then uh, the third book right here uh, which is Python for data analysis would be a very handy book because uh, here the focus would be totally different uh, in the data science design manual we may not talk too much about implementation here most of the discussion might be on just the theory whereas in Python for data analysis you will find more details about the Python libraries so this might be another handy book for you and these books would be important when you want to make your career in data science and as goes the other book doing data science it should be just like um, uh, you know Python for data analysis uh, there's this uh, very standard book which is pattern recognition and machine learning uh, this is a good reference book uh, so you're welcome to have a look at that too but it might be a little intense it needs a lot of mathematical background but yeah I will encourage you to have a look at those that as well so now uh, what I'll be doing during the lectures I will also give you a reference to uh, the textbook from which I am uh, teaching a particular topic as an example uh, we have another very standard uh, machine learning book uh, which is by Tom Mitchell so as an example if I happen to teach neural networks from Tom Mitchell then I will tell you in my lecture that you know this part that I'm teaching you right now is from the machine learning textbook written by Tom Mitchell so that way it will be easier for you to refer to that textbook if you uh, want to learn more about what I'm teaching all right so again you know the same uh, issue of uh, the discussion forum we'll be using Piazza <laughs> Now, when you are using Piazza, probably you know the rules regarding it. You should be very careful about academic integrity. So, since you'll have some homeworks uh, and assignments, it's fine to help your friends.
but you should be very very careful you should never uh, post your solutions so you should never share your assignments for you uh, with your friends so be careful when you're using uh, piazza for discussion you can discuss concepts that is perfectly all right but make sure that you're not posting your solution as an example assume that uh, you know uh, we'll be using we'll be learning probability and there's a concept like entropy and if i have given you a question in your homework which says that compute the entropy for the scenario now you can discuss with your friends the concept of entropy but in this process you should never share the answer to a question which is there in the homework because i will treat that as academic dishonesty so if in doubt check with me all right and and th that's about it do not post your assignment solutions there this is regarded as academic dishonesty case okay so uh, all right i think i already mentioned to you about the piazza forum all right so grading criteria again this should be there in your mind like how are we going uh, how, how we will grade uh, this course so there will be one midterm exam uh, which will carry 20% of your uh, final grade there will be one final test uh, which will uh, account for 25% of your final grade the project would be the main component of this course which will have 35% weight we'll have quizzes uh, quizzes would be 6% and the homework would be 14 percent now you might be having these questions like how many uh, quizzes when will we have quizzes how many homeworks so i'll request you to please give me some time maybe in a day or so i'll come up with that plan and i'll share the dates with you all right so again the same message right don't copy assignments if you do that then you will be penalized for that will give you a negative grade for copying so which is a bad news what what i would say is do your work honestly doesn't matter if it is not 100% if it is 75% correct you will get 75% but if you are trying to make it 100% um, by using some unfair means then uh, if you are caught then that would be a bad news all right so please do your assignments and your project your work yourself be honest okay all right so now about the dates so i do have some dates in mind which i'll say is almost confirm these are the dates for your exam your midterm test would be on 15th of june uh, that is monday and your final exam would be on 1st of July, which is Wednesday. Now, these exams would be um, given to you online. And then um, probably you know about these systems. Uh, it will be uh, proctored using Responders Lockdown Browser and Responders Monitor. Uh, so, I hope you know how these systems work. If not let me know I will post the instructions like how to uh, install responders lockdown browser and for monitor you don't need to worry too much uh, what you need is um, a webcam so if you're using a laptop then I will assume that the laptop will have an integrated webcam and if uh, you're using uh, uh, you know your desktop machine then you'll have to make an arrangement for a webcam but this is a must okay so we will not grade your test if you don't have your recorded video so i believe that this should not be a problem because uh, we had our previous uh, semester as uh, online so i would believe that you uh, had some practice using these systems all right so again the same information repeated multiple times uh, blackboard uh, announcements are important uh, everything would be posted over there the lecture material and all 
and even the grades you will get the you know so if you're done with the quiz probably you should receive your quiz grade right there on the blackboard same applies to your homeworks or your exam or your test and also your project so all the grades would be posted on your blackboard again you know academic honesty so this lecture the very first lecture is about all these aspects of the course uh, so hopefully you know about our university rule uh, about academic honesty all the work that you submit should be your own work and you can discuss the general uh, assignment concepts with your friend as I was mentioning uh, you know and that is encouraged uh, discussing the concept with your friends is encouraged and even I will participate in that uh, you can uh, directly ask question to me I'll try my best and uh, I'll have TAs they will join us too we will discuss concepts but we should never share the answer okay because that that won't be uh, that will be counted as academic dishonesty case you should never share code or answers with other people now why because if you are suspected of cheating you will be brought up on academic dishonesty charges which is the worst case that can happen and if you find guilty you know the result it will be enough so I, I mentioned that in all my course in the first lecture which is the easiest way to fail in the course the easiest way to fail in the course is to be dishonest all right so never ever do that okay now uh, to the data science thing right so why should you register for data science so this is a motivation for you people um, why data science right so probably you know about it that data science is one of the emerging domain in which um, we have a lot of job opportunities and even these jobs that we have in data science are uh, challenging and at the same time these are highly paid jobs as well so um, let's look at some reference and try to understand that how important data science is in today's scenario so there was this report uh, which has been mentioned right here and if you're interested in knowing about this dear report in detail you can follow this link and read about it and it says that uh, the demand for data scientists is too much and we don't have those many data scientists right now so what does it say it says that data science skills are in high demand across the industries so how much is that so we are uh, we are lacking 151,717 data scientists so these many positions are not uh, filled because of the lack of that skill we don't have sufficient data scientists there are 151,717 vacancies in data science for which we could not find the skilled people a big motivation for us that's one resource and how about this one now the data scientist job has been selected by Glassdoor as the most satisfying job and the best paid job in 2016 17 18 and 19 so you can see that consistent trend which highlights the fact that data science has a big future a very bright future all right now well, what are we going to study? Again, this is kind of unrelated to the previous topics, but that's important. Uh, what will we teach? We will teach you the theory as well as the practical aspects of data science, the, you know, techniques, theory as well as the programming skills are required and we will teach that. Now, uh, you know, the next slide is related to what we have here here the question that we were answering was why should we study data science today so one of the motivation is that you have very bright future in data science and there could be other reasons also like you might be 
you know, fascinated by data science, right? It can happen. I, I love data science. I like the challenges. I like the problems in data science. So that could be the case with you also. But other than that, you have this, you know, career prospect. It's in high demand. Okay. So now the point is, why are these jobs so much in demand? Why do we have a shortage in supply? Okay, why do we have a shortage? The reason is that it is challenging, right? So it's not easy. So the next question right here in the slide is, is data science challenging? Well, the answer to that is yes, it is. That's the reason that data scientists are paid highly. So what are the challenges? Well, it has to do with the nature of data science. You need to know um, a lot of skills. What are these skills? For being a successful data scientist, you should have a decent uh, background in probability. You should have decent understanding of linear algebra. You should know statistics. You should also have some idea about machine learning algorithms. Uh, you should know how to visualize the data. Uh, you should have decent programming skill. And at the same time, you should have some domain knowledge as well. So um, I have some experience um, of appearing in an interview and I did pretty well. Uh, I was good, you know, in machine learning and I was answering all the questions. But that was an interview for a bank. Unfortunately, I did not have a background in finance. So that was, uh, uh, that went against me. So the message is that you should be good in these tech, uh, these domain. You should know uh, probability, linear algebra, machine learning. Uh, you should have a decent programming skill. But at the same time, you should also have some background information. You should know the domain as well. So. If you want to do a data science um, in uh, on a medical data, then you should have some understanding of the domain. You should know what problem you are solving. You should understand the data. Okay, so domain knowledge is also very handy. So, uh, as an example, uh, say um, there is a company which works on images, and you have to analyze images, but you don't have the background in images, so that will be uh, a negative factor all right so all these components that we need to learn uh, in data science makes it a little challenging okay now well you might be thinking about it you know it's only the introductory lecture and we are supposed to know so much so can I become a data scientist when I don't know much of these things that you spoke about Right, so if you want to count, then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven skills to have just for one, uh, um, yeah, one domain which is data science. Fortunately, or unfortunately, that is the case. But one good news is that if you don't know most of these things, even then you are fine. Okay, why? So that's the question. I don't know much of these. Can I uh, dream to be a data scientist? Well, yes, the answer is yes, you can. What you need is, uh, you know, that enthusiasm. You should have the dream uh, to be a data scientist and then you should be ready to work hard for that. Okay, so now what is the good news um, in this case? The good news is about the libraries that we have available. So in Python, we have a lot of uh, libraries available in which we will have the implementation of these algorithms which are very handy in data science. So you won't have to reinvent the wheel. As an example, if you have to use neural network, so artificial neural network uh, is a classification and even regression algorithm which is heavily used in machine learning and yes, in data science. So you won't have to implement um, neural network or artificial neural network right from scratch. We have that already implemented in Python libraries like scikit-learn, scikit-learn. Okay, so you have to just, you should have, you know, uh, 
um, the determination uh, to go and read about uh, those libraries on the manual or the references and then you can start using it all right so these libraries that you have are a good way to start uh, practicing data science all right so so that's a good news actually because a lot of things have been already implemented so what you need to do is to learn about those algorithms because the implementation has been already done and these are very standard implementations and these are very efficient as well okay so if you don't know most of the stuff right here don't give up the hope anyway we have to learn that in this course good and a lot of times when you um, start working on, on a project then while working on the project you learn a lot of things that you didn't know about all right so now the big question for data science what is the best language what language should I use well now the good news is right now uh, as of today Python is considered to be the best language for data science well maybe some five or six years back if you had asked me this question then I would have said Python and R so R and Python were competing to uh, get the, uh, the the top position for data science language but as of today I'll say that Python has taken the lead all right so Python is the winner uh, in today's uh, scenario I'll say for data science but still R is a language which is still popular in a community which is mostly the community of the statisticians they love R so if you're coming from the statistics background you you, you would still like to use an R, use R as a language so R is still um, a popular language in data science but it's confined to the statisticians they use R but we will stick to Python MATLAB is another um, you know powerful language uh, which we can use for data science it's a very uh, uh, good language but uh, there is a price attached to it um, you need to buy MATLAB then only you can use it whereas Python and R are free for MATLAB you need to buy that so for that reason maybe a lot of startup companies may not be ready to invest into MATLAB and they would encourage you to learn the language like Python uh, or R which are freely available excuse me there are other languages like Java and Scala which are popular too but not many people use it there are some people they like to use Java and Scala but most of the people right now they are using Python for data science okay so what do we have here well another good news for Python so this is um, uh, regarding the top uh, programming languages in 2019 which was the most recent um, ranking that I could get and this is being referenced from spectrum I triple spectrum and here also you can see that Python is number one so there's some score I don't know how did they compute this score but if you look at the score then Python has hundred percent hundred then you have Java, C, then C++, and R is the fifth language, and Python is number one. So this will uh, should convince us that you know we will stick to Python for CSC three five one. Okay, so again, you'd be curious to know like how are we going to um, um, how uh, will teach you uh, the data science. So what would be the approach to the lecture? So here we will start with one small topic or a problem and then we'll make sure that we are uh, looking at the theory and after understanding the theory we are looking at its implementation. So wherever it will be possible to implement we will implement and in some cases in some machine learning algorithms its implementation is very difficult 
so in those cases what we will do in those cases we'll learn the libraries and we'll make sure that we understand how to use these libraries okay so it will be a good mix of theory as well as implementation and we will take one problem at a time and we'll solve that using theory and then we'll look at the implementation as well now if you already have um, a good background uh, in probability statistics you understand linear algebra and you have done programming in Python then uh, then that's a good news but if not don't worry be ready to learn that because it's a good opportunity and you know uh, you'll be alright and in this process we will uh, look at some important machine learning topics because if you remember I said that this is an interdisciplinary course multidisciplinary and we have the techniques from different domains like uh, machine learning statistics and probability so machine learning is a very important component of data science so for that reason we will uh, uh, go over some very important machine learning uh, algorithms and uh, why are we doing it the reason being uh, that we don't want to use any um, algorithm as a black box right and as I made the statement that we we will be using Python and Python we have some very good libraries and we'll be using uh, those libraries for our algorithm but when we are using the library we should also understand like what has been implemented in that although we will not implement those algorithms but we should understand how that algorithm works as an example neural networks artificial neural networks so we should know how an artificial neural network works and with that information we will use the implementation of ANN which is available in sklearn scikit-learn library of Python okay so now what is data science right let's let's uh, start uh, understanding it you know let's let's make sure that we understand what this domain is so well uh, you were expecting that we'll get a definition for data science but unfortunately we cannot define data science uh, because it is still emerging everybody uh, most of the people they'll have their own definition of data science so we may not have a globally agreed upon definition of data science but what we know for sure about data science is that it has different components in it and what are the different elements of the component of data science we have exploratory data analysis and visualization you have machine learning and statistics you will have high performance computing well you can go on there are only three to three uh, you know components I can add databases as well right so that's the reason I said that uh, this definition is very open um, you can have three or four people and these three or four people can come up with three or four different definition of data science and every definition might be correct although different but they all have may have a de correct definition of data science so I found this uh, picture very interesting which I have borrowed from this article on medium so what do we have here look at this diagram we have three circles so this uh, circle on the left that you have which I believe is in pink color you have computer science then on the right hand side the blue circle that you have it is about math and statistics then you have uh, the subject matter which is the domain knowledge now when you look at the intersection of all these three domains then right here the center that you're looking at this region is your data science so that means this data science that you have is the, the domain which is in the which falls in the intersection of computer science maths and statistics and as well as the domain knowledge all right and you have machine learning right here so that's an interesting uh, picture which I found about data science all right 
so that is about it it's an inter interdisciplinary domain which involves a lot of techniques uh, like data analysis data visualization it will have uh, the techniques from machine learning the techniques from statistics and some techniques from uh, high performance computing now you might wonder like why do we need high performance computing well the answer to that is that most often the data science approach that we have to apply on the data might be on a very very big data right so we, we will not always get a very small data the data could be very very big so if the data is pretty big say in terabytes all right and even if terabyte is too much even if your data size is in 10 GB it will be very difficult for you to um, work on that data on your personal computer 10 GB might give you a difficult time so for those cases where your data size may be very big we will have to use uh, the big data uh, approach we will have to use high performance computing okay so that is also an important component of data science okay so the last slide in this very first introductory lecture is why data science like uh, this question could be rephrased like uh, why is data science so important or why should we doing the data science at the first place well to answer that question I'll say that in today's age we have a lot of data available so data is being generated at a very fast pace and we have uh, a lot of technological development we are carrying uh, you know smart phones mobile phones with us and there are a lot of apps which are um, you know storing your data uh, you know and this data has been collected uh, at you know at place somewhere in some data center so the message is that because of the the technological development the data is being generated at a very high pace there are a lot of things there are a lot of equipments uh, which are generating a lot of data and now this data has become a very uh, important resource and for these organizations who are generating this data uh, this data is very important just think about uh, you know the systems like um, any e-commerce system you can think about Amazon so the Amazon has a lot of users the users are doing shopping there then Amazon is you know storing the uh, behavior of the customer now this data that they are collecting about different users and their shopping habits is a big resource for them they can utilize that they can come up with uh, the recommendation system and in fact they do have recommender system so probably this is something you might have felt when you go and you're shopping for a, a um, textbook you might find some recommendations down there so how is that recommendation being generated well there is some algorithm working behind the scene which is uh, which has been developed or modeled using the data set which was uh, which is available to Amazon okay so the message is that we are generating a lot of data in different domains and now when we have so much of data now this organization they want to understand like how can they uh, learn from the data and use that learning from the data to have the, um, the business advantage to have the competitive advantage right so now this has become very important huge data and another thing that we have in our favor is the advances that we are making in technology now we have cheaper storage devices we have uh, faster processors we have very very efficient machines so now something which was impossible to implement uh, because of the hardware limitations uh, maybe some 10 years back has become possible now we have uh, you know um, uh, 
we have uh, clusters now we have very very powerful machines now uh, the, um, the storage devices have become cheaper so all these things are working in our favor and that's the reason why data science has picked up so much and then we have some role models as well we see different organizations around us different companies around us which have been very successful uh, by exploiting uh, the machine learning algorithms or by doing data science so the examples could be Google and some hedge funds and then there are some smart people like Nat Silver if you want to read about him you will find some interesting facts he's a statistician who has done some interesting data analytics and which made him a very very popular so he had done some um, yeah, baseball um, scores analysis match analysis or data analysis and he also did some election based data analysis all right so i believe i should stop right here and this is sufficient for our first introductory lecture and in my next video lecture i will cover the uh, you know the next topic all right thank you so much bye bye